The clicker question asked if I throw something up at a speed V0 or I throw something down at a speed V0, how does its speed at the ground compare? So when the object gets to the ground, okay, so I drew the object in there. And the answer is that it is the same, and let's see why. Um, so in order to see why, I'm not even gonna di bother discussing the whole trip that shows here delta x, right? So all I care about is what happens uh, when I throw an object up at the top of the building, let's say. So I'm interested in the part of the trip here when the if I throw the object up at V0, what happens to it when it comes back down? If I throw an object up, what happens to it when it gets back to me? And then we'll compare it to the situation when I throw the object down. So let's say that I throw an object upwards. from some starting point. It's got some upward velocity V0. It goes up, comes back down. In one dimension, it would come back down in exactly the same place. I'm just drawing it in two dimensions just to, to be able to differentiate between the two. And we want to know what happens when it gets back to the same position. What is its velocity in the downward direction? So now I'm going to call it V, right? So its initial velocity is V0, its final velocity is V. And what is V, how does V compare to V0 when I throw it upwards? And a few of you said it depends how hard you throw it. And the answer is, is in the absence of all other forces, it doesn't matter how hard I throw it. Um, if it's F after it leaves my hands, it's going at some arbitrary V0, and it's only under the influence of gravity. If it's only under the influence of gravity, then it is accelerating downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. And if it's starting at my hands, X initial, and it's ending at same place at my hands, or at the level of my hands, or at the level where I threw it from, XF, then what is delta X? Delta X, XF minus XI, delta X is zero. Its displacement is zero, okay? Doesn't mean it hasn't gone anywhere. It's gone up and come back down. Its displacement is zero. Whoops. So now in order to solve this problem um, of what is V compared to V0, uh, we need to choose a direction and plug into an equation. Since we had already been going with a positive X in the downward direction, let's do positive X in the downward direction. That's just defining my direction. So all arrows pointing down are positive, all arrows pointing up are, po are negative. And let's go ahead and write down my kinematic equations. I'm gonna take this picture, imagine it, let me go to the next page. Um, and write down my kinematic equations. Delta x is one half a t squared plus v zero t. So I've gone ahead and written everything down, wrote down my three equations, wrote down all of my variables. Delta x equals zero, we've already explained that. V zero is just some arbitrary, I'm throwing it upwards with a speed v zero. Um, now this can get a little bit confusing here, you know, since I'm throwing it upwards, it is a negative quantity because down is positive but is the negative built into V0? Is V0 equal to minus three? Or are we saying the vector V0 is minus a scalar quantity um, three? So, you know, if we say the magnitude of V0 is V0, the magnitude of the initial velocity is, we're calling it V0, then the vector of the initial velocity is minus um, the magnitude. Doesn't matter in this case whether, um, we build, whether we build the negative sign into V0 or we explicitly take it out. But just to explicitly put the minus sign in, let's just say that, that the, the initial velocity is a negative constant, where the constant is positive V0. Okay. So what we want to do in this case is we want to know what is V, what is V, uh, how does that relate to V0? And so we got to find a, a, a relationship that is going to give us the relationship between the variables that we know. We don't know time and we don't care about time here, so the first two may not be the most useful and the third equation is going to be the most useful. If we plug into the third equation, what we end up getting is that V squared equals V0 squared. This is why the negative sign doesn't matter because we're squaring it anyway. Um, plus 2a delta x. If we then solve that, delta x is 0, 
And so we simply get that v squared equals v0 squared. So our kinematic equation, if the body is undergoing constant acceleration, which it is once it leaves our hands at a speed of v0 going upwards, the body is undergoing constant acceleration, so we can use our kinematic equations, what we find is that the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared. What does that mean algebraically? If v squared is equal to v0 squared, therefore v is equal to plus or minus v0. And again, this again shows why it doesn't matter whether we made v0 explicitly positive or negative to begin with. What this shows is that the final velocity is equal to either the positive or the negative of the initial velocity. And if we're looking at the object where its initial velocity is going up at v0, its final velocity, it must be going down, then clearly the physical answer here is v is equal to minus v0. So the final velocity is equal to the negative of the initial velocity. It's got the same speed, it's going in the opposite direction. So the magnitude, v, is equal to v0. It's got the same speed, and it's going in the opposite direction. So in conclusion, when I throw something up, if it's only under the influence of gravity, when it comes back down, regardless of how hard I throw it, regardless of how fast I throw it, regardless of how high I throw it, when it comes back down to the same place, to the same place, it's got to be going at the same speed in the opposite direction. That's what the kinematics tells us. Okay, so for those of you who are feeling a little bit skeptical or uncomfortable with the calculation we just did, let's do a different calculation. Let's break the up trip separate from the down trip. Break them up. The up trip separate from the down trip. Let me draw a picture. Okay, here I've broken it up into two different trips, right? So something that we do in problems is sometimes we break them up into different trips or different, we break up a, a, a motion into different pieces, parts, and analyze each part separately. We're going to need to do that sometimes in particular. We're going to need to do it when the acceleration changes, um, but sometimes we even need to do it when, I ask, when you're asked for a variable um, that happens in the middle of the trip. So uh, we, the, on the left-hand side is, is me, a, a beautiful me, um, throwing it upwards um, at speed V0 in the upwards direction, and it goes up to a maximum height. It stops there. And then we switch over to the second picture on the right where it starts from the top and it falls back down to where my hands are. I just don't show me in the second picture. On the way up, it displaces delta x up. On the way down, it displaces delta x down. Hence, I put arrows on both ends of the delta x vector. Um, and it accelerates downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's go ahead and define a direction. Again, doesn't matter whether we define up or down as positive. Um, in this case, just to switch it up, I'll define the up direction as positive, positive x. That's just defining our frame of reference. And let's go ahead and take these two separate motions and ask what is the uh, final, what is the velocity at each position and what is delta x. So what is v0, v for each, for each. So I'm, so let, I'm asking what is the initial and final velocity in each trip and what is delta a, x for each trip. Um, we could figure out the time for each trip too, um, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask for that. And we could do it in terms of the variables, v0 and a, or we could actually do it with numbers. I think for the sake of um, those of you who like numbers, let's just say, uh, I say we initially throw it upwards at v0, um, let's say it's 7 meters per second up. I put the vector sign on there just to, so we stop getting confused between vectors and scalars. Uh, 7 meters per second up. So I'm now going to solve for the going up trip and for the going down trip, and then we can compare the two. I'm going to go to a new page and start writing things down. Okay, so being a bit redundant here, I've drawn the picture and I've written down my variables. Remember, we decided to make the up the positive direction instead of down the positive direction like the last problem. Uh, delta x is going up. It's displacing upwards. Acceleration is still downwards. Um, it's always downwards due to gravity. 
and the initial velocity is upward. So I've filled in some of these things. Delta x is an unknown. We've asked that question. What is delta x? V0 is positive 7 meters per second because the V0 vector is pointing in the same direction as the plus x vector. A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared now because A is opposite the positive vector, um, positive direction vector. And V final. What about V final, right? V final is the velocity at the top. What is V final? What if, what, if we're talking about something that we throw up and we want to know how far it goes, how far it goes is when it comes to a stop. So V final is what? It's zero, right? It comes to a stop at the top when we throw it upwards. Okay, so now the kinematic equation, delta x equals one half at squared plus V zero t. I wrote down my three kinematic equations. Now we say, oh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for delta x. So where does delta x come in? Delta x is here. Delta x is here. Which equation will I use? Well, the thing that I didn't write down when I wrote down what I know and what I don't know is I forgot to write down the fact that I don't know time, <clears throat> excuse me, time either. So it actually makes the most sense to use the third equation. And we can use the third equation to solve for delta x because everything else is known, v, v, 0, and a. So I've gone ahead and plugged in the known variables into the third equation. Uh, remember, it's so important to carry your signs. Plus 7 meters per second and minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Solve for delta x. Solve for delta x. Make sure to carry your units and your signs. You try the algebra on your own. We get delta x equals positive 2.5 meters. Does the positive make sense? Yes, because we chose up as the positive direction and the displacement is in the up direction, so the positive makes sense. So we've determined delta x and v, v initial and v final for the up trip. Now let's do the down trip. Okay, so I've drawn the picture for the on the way down, and I'm going to not make any assumptions here until we talk about it. So let's first of all keep, we, we're keeping with our convention, we called up the plus direction for the first part of the problem, so we'll keep with up being the plus direction in the second part of the problem, so as not to confuse ourselves, even though it's uh, on its way down, that's fine. Up is the positive direction, uh, it's displacing in the downward direction, it's got a velocity, a final velocity in the downward direction, and while we do know these quantities, we need to discuss why we know them. First of all, the initial velocity. Now the initial velocity is when it's at the top. When it's at the top, what's its initial velocity? We just said, the top, at the top, it's starting from rest, at the top of the trip. Delta x, what is delta x? Well, actually, since it's coming back to where it, it, it started from, delta x is just going to be the same magnitude, and it's in the opposite direction. So it's minus 2.5 meters. It has to be, because it's going the same path. It's starting, and fi it's, its starting point and finish point are the same as the starting point and finish point. Uh, uh, the, sorry, the starting point now is the finish point from before, and the finish point now is the starting point from before. Um, so that has to be the same, although we could prove that um, using, using the kinematic equations. Um, v final, uh, unknown. Well, we did, uh, we'll, we'll show what that is in a second and T is unknown. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so there, I think the important thing here is to recognize that delta X in this case is, has to be the same as before, just in the opposite direction. So it's negative 2.5 meters. Let's go ahead and solve for V. In this case, I'm not going to rewrite the three kinematic equations because we've already written them down for this problem, but the easiest one to use is going to be the third one, and so we've got v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta x, and we plug in. So when we plug in to that equation, we get v squared is 49 meters squared per second squared. I left it in this form for a reason. First of all, carrying your units, making sure they work. Uh, when we take the square root of meters squared per second squared, we've got meters per second. And second of all, is when you take a square root, is what's the square root of 49? The square root of 49 is not 7, it's plus or minus 7 meters per second, right? We're so trained to think positive square root, but the square root is plus or minus 7. So the answer is there are two answers. It's either plus 7 meters per second or it's minus 7 meters per second. And the question is, is which one of those is the correct answer? Think about it. Well, since we chose up the positive direction and V is going down, then the correct answer here is minus 7 meters per second. So the final velocity is minus 7 meters per second. Okay, so what can we conclude from the up trip and the down trip?
On the up trip, delta x up is equal to plus 2.5 meters. On the down trip, delta x down equals minus 2.5 meters. And we figured out on the up trip that v0 up was plus 7 meters per second. And figured out on the down trip, v final down was minus 7 meters per second. So what, what does this show us? This shows us that the net displacement, right? So the net displacement, delta x total, is 0. And that when your delta x total is 0, your velocity, when it comes back down, must be the same in magnitude and the opposite in direction, which is what we showed the first time without doing all of the work in between, right? You, in other words, you don't have to break it up into the up trip and the down trip. We would have to break it up into the up trip and down trip if I want to know how high it goes. But um, if we don't care about what happens in the intervening time, then all we care about is start to finish. So let's bring it back to the original question. Back to the original question, which is, if I throw something up at V0, or I, or I throw it down at V0, how does that impact the speed when it reaches the ground? And the answer is, is that the one that I throw up must come back down and looks just like the one that I threw down just at a later time, and so that they both have the same physics from then on. From then on, when they're both on their way down, then they both started on the way down with a speed of V0, um, and so they both will end up with the same final speed at the ground. Now, what will be the difference between the two? The difference is the one that I threw upwards takes longer. So they won't have the same amount of time. It takes longer. They have the same displacement. They have the same final velocity. They have the same acceleration. But the one that I threw up will take longer to get to the ground. Get it?